Good evening, everyone, and welcome. We will be starting here in just a moment. We know we've got a lot of you signing on, so I am going to go ahead and mute everyone to start. We will have time to discuss at the end. Appreciate you guys being here. All right, everyone. So we're going to go ahead and get started here in just a moment. Um, I do have everyone muted and I am going to go ahead and share my screen. So welcome to Money Mondays. If you are at Exit Strategy, we do these every Monday evening. So we've got daytime classes, of course, for our agents almost every day, Monday through Friday. And we have this evening time together as well. So we're always looking forward to seeing you guys on these events. We're going to dive right in. So tonight we're talking about life post COVID. What are we all going to do? Because it has just been a time for everybody. And we know that you guys are all kind of ready to get, get on with your world and, um, you know, really try to, to recreate your business. And we've all done some things during COVID that have helped our business. Um, at Exit Strategy, we've had our best year ever in 2020. 2021 looks even better. Um, but we've also developed some habits that aren't so great. So what I want to do tonight is focus with you on what habits we want to bring back to the table, what things maybe we want to adjust. And so this is powerful immediate actions for post COVID. And I'm going to go ahead and get uh, started. I think you all can see my screen and uh, let's dive right in here. So the first thing we're going to do, we're going to connect with our database. Now, maybe you've already been doing this during COVID, but maybe not. I want you to go back to all of your past clients because what we know right now is you're struggling with low inventory. You're running ragged with buyers. You're trying to find more sellers and we want to be able to engage our database immediately. So you're gonna want that personal contact with them. Text them, call them, whatever you need to do. Don't rely on just those baselines of that monthly e-newsletter. A lot of us do at Exit Strategy. We have a CRM that we pay for for each one of our agents. We do the monthly e-newsletter, but we want to expand beyond that. Send your past clients a cloud CMA. Do a quick Remind 360 CMA. Anything like that to get some sort of follow-up with people, get them started on a conversation if they're past clients of yours. Tell them about the rising interest rates. The interest rates are going up a bit. That's going to dampen buyer enthusiasm. Um, we feel like now is the time to get the property on the market with the very low inventory and the potential for the interest rates to continue rising. Pop by with a small gift. I've been doing pop bys. Some of you guys that are in my coaching at Exit know that I'm a Brian Buffini um, junkie and also uh, in the uh, core program, strongly believe in core. And both of them talk to you about pop buys. Well, pop buys with COVID have been a little bit more difficult, but take yourself out of the mindset of COVID and into the post-COVID world, can you drop by now with something, maybe leave it at their doorstep until we get the chance to really be more free with everyone when the vaccines are fully distributed? What can you do as far as the CMAs for people that you have already talked to about listing in the past? Go on the MLS and see if these people ever listed. Did they list with somebody else and it didn't work out? Did that listing get canceled? Go back and find the inventory. You absolutely have to do that. The next thing I want to talk to you about is holding events. Now, Obviously, we're not fully open uh, in some ways yet. Our offices reopened last year in June, but we wanted to turn around and be able to um, start doing these events online. Go back to your 12-month marketing calendar. If you're not using Eventbrite like I did with you guys tonight, go and start using Eventbrite. Do Zoom meetings, do book clubs online, whatever you can do to re-engage people. And these events, we call them leveraged events. That's a core word. Um, from the core training program that I'm a graduate of. Leverage events, we do it at our office for all of our database. If you're not doing that as an office, consider maybe masterminding with some other people at your office. For example, our May event for exit strategy, we are doing a um, how to do a property analysis, how for investors. So buy and hold invest in, how do you figure out cap rate, all that kind of stuff, um, your net operating income. We have a pro forma I've developed that I'm gonna to send to our agents and they're gonna be able to send that out to their database. What a great baseline to provide some value. We do fitness classes, some health and wellness, charity and community events. Start doing those as an office or as a group. 
it also gives you a great reason to reach out. Hi, Charles. This is Savannah. I had a six o'clock schedule with you, and <laughs> the buyer second, just guys. reached out to somebody. me and told me that they're not going to be Hold able to make second, it, guys. so I'm going to have to reschedule. Have you? Okay, that person is muted. <laughs> All right, let's go ahead and get, get back to it. Um, so with that, um, going back to the leveraged events, I want to go back to that screen. Um, you want to be able to reach out to people and say, hey, I've got an event coming up, whether it's online or in person, I'm going to let you decide based on what's going on in your area, how your comfort level is. I've started to do first Fridays at our house for our agents and in, in our office, our coaching program. Um, so they can come back over to my house and kind of get re reacquainted with each other. We're doing some limited um, happy hours coming up. You may start to feel comfortable in doing that. Um, myself, we just started uh, my kickball league back up. It's been a great source of business for me over the years. Already got a lead out of that. Our first game was two weeks ago. I'm starting to rebuild that part of my database. So what is it that you did before COVID that you need to reinvent the wheel and start doing again. So all of these personal conversations, these personal in person or whether it's online still, these communications need to start again. A lot of us have dropped out of some things or events stopped happening, restart those events. And really it's also to rebuild your connections with your referral army. Um, we talked on Saturday about cost of sales. If you are not on my daily dose, get on my daily dose right now, go to teamlibert.com and click on the daily dose button. That is for everybody from all brokerages. And we did on Saturday a session uh, in my learning lab about how to do cost of sales. And in cost of sales training, what I showed you was a referral cost nothing, a referral from another past client, somebody in your database, maybe somebody that's never going to buy a house through you or sell a house through you, but they've got people in their world that need real estate help. Those don't cost anything. You know, unlike an Op City lead or a Redfin lead or something like that, that we're working with, that we have to pay a referral fee out. Or if we're working with Zillow and you pay money for Zillow every month, look at your cost of sales on these leads when you close them. Um, go donate to a charity help a charity out. There's a lot of charities in need right now. Um, I'm donating a portion of each sale to a different charity and you can do the same, just a little bit, you know, just every little bit helps. Volunteer, um, we did a canned food drive, we've done a coat drive at our office. Consider doing something that re-engages you with the community. Those leverage events are gold. Here's what else to think about right now, FISBOs and expireds. Now, there's not a lot of listings expiring, but there are some out there. I use the, um, in the MLS, I use the hot sheet every morning. I look at it and I'm like, okay, there's still stuff out there that's not being serviced. There's fit for sale by owners. People are reading the media hype that every listing is selling over asking price. And these people are throwing FISBOs up uh, for sale by owners up on their own maybe not using the right marketing techniques that you as a realtor can do, get back into those conversations. Um, I'm doing free open houses for some FISBOs just to kind of have them try me out. Um, on my LinkedIn, I talk about the 11th level open house. Um, that is a concept uh, taken from another coaching program, but then I added to it, it was a seventh level. I now do an 11th level open house. It breaks down all the value items for them. So take a look and connect with me on LinkedIn if we're not already there. Have your open house include a text message code. We're doing a lot of text message codes at our office right now. We get some free ones, um, digital business cards, things like that. If you don't have them, look into them because people, the, the hyperlinks are too hard to get to. They mess with your algorithm on Facebook and Instagram. The text message codes don't mess with any of that stuff. People love to get the information now and not have to deal with paper, especially during COVID. So post COVID, keep those QR codes alive, but also the text message codes. We've got one for every property in, in our brokerage through the uh, expert marketing suite at Exit. I would recommend you use that. I know a lot of you are from Exit on this call tonight. You want to figure out a way to be able to get people information. And then also it's lead capture because when they're texting you uh, or texting the number for the text message code, Unlike a QR code, you get their phone number. So they don't even sometimes think about that coming in, but you're getting their phone number to be able to follow up. We're going to talk about database later in a bit. Let's talk about inventory. Inventory right now is rough. We're all struggling with it. Get some sort of conversation going on social media, talking about your inventory needs. I've been getting listings doing that. I've had people that listen with me before. We ended up renting the place out for a year or two. People are like, hey, I saw you're talking about inventory needs in my area. What's going on? So 
Chicago Association of Realtors, for those of you that are local, if you're in the Illinois Realtor Association, if you're in any local state board or a national board, I think we're all members of NAR, they have great statistics online right now. Here's what's going on in the market. Illinois Realtors just released theirs, Chicago Association of Realtors. I had this in my um, coaching um, for you guys the other day that are in my coaching at Exit. Um, sent out that information, use those statistics. They're very powerful to say, here's what's going on in the market. You will get more people engaging you and asking you questions. Um, if you were in my Saturday coaching, you saw some people interacting with me on social media. All those people are now in my database and they're getting my monthly e-newsletter. I made sure they're on my social media. Um, all of that's gotta be an interconnected relationship. Let's talk about buyer searches. Buyer searches now half to be urgent. You've got to explain to buyers the inventory situation if they're not already aware. Get these searches going at least twice a day. I'm now using the real-time search in our MLS. Use the HomeSnap app. HomeSnap app that gives them the opportunity to browse on a mobile device beyond what you are out there sending them. So they're going to feel a little bit more like they have control and that there's the potential that they're going to find something you didn't, even though in reality, we're all sending them what's in the MLS. If you're having problems scheduling appointments, I'm using an app called Calendly. Uh, for those of you guys that coach with me, you know that's how we schedule our one-on-ones and our, our share our screen conversations, all that. Calendly is a great app. There's a free trial to it. There's actually a free version of it. Um, I'm sitting there sending everybody the link and saying, hey, go on my Calendly, get, get a time booked with me, and let's get out there and see houses. So don't be going back and forth with what times work for you, what times work for me. Here, let me adjust this get them on your Calendly. It's a very, very simple program to use. Another thing to think about, if you haven't done a rehab loan seminar, we did one as an office a couple months ago, start thinking about doing rehab loan conversations with each one of your buyers, because what you're going to realize is there are properties not selling that need work. And what that's going to do is create an opportunity for you to go back in and say, hey, Mr. Buyer, I know we're not buying anything that's perfect. What about this? This is a reduced price. You can make it what you want it. Finance uh, the renovation costs into your loan. Have those conversations. I'm starting to get some of my buyers to relook at that idea that said they wanted a turnkey property and they didn't want to do any work. Well, now that they're realizing the inventory reality, they're going into these rehab loans. Facebook and Instagram stories. I've noticed some of you have kind of lost steam with social media. You know, we're in COVID, we're working from home, maybe you're kind of tuned out on social media a little bit because of all the stuff that went on last year and the politics and things like that. Well, get back into it. And there's a way around having to look at all the noise, Facebook and Instagram stories. And actually now there are LinkedIn stories as well. I love LinkedIn. We'll talk about that in a little bit. What I love about the stories is it bypasses the entire algorithm. You don't have to sit there and stare at all the feed of, of mess and nastiness. Go on the stories, post your story. It lasts 24 hours and you're done. You can be done for the day. So I like these temporary pushes. It's going to give you almost like a feeling that you've got a commercial going. Um, I use this so that I'm able to get my information out. I'm not sitting on social media that long. If you've noticed that not everybody's using stories. What does that mean? Your content's going to be shoved up towards the top. It comes in through a different part of the feed, and it's just easier for everyone to notice. Why is Facebook and Instagram doing this? Well, remember, first of all, Facebook owns Instagram, and they're mad that Snapchat had created so much popularity. Now there's TikTok as well. Well, those platforms are still much smaller than Facebook and Instagram, but Facebook said, well, we want a 24-hour Snapchat like feel as well, we're going to do our own stories and they've become a very easy way to create traction and kind of bypass the mess. What about Facebook Live? We've forgotten about that. Go back to Facebook Live. What I love about Facebook Live is that if you put it in your monthly calendar, you have something consistent, you can really dominate on social media. What I like also about it is it repurposes so that if you've got a good video that you liked, they're never going to be perfect because they're live. But if you've got a good video, and by the way, if you feel like you're maybe not the best social media speaker, have a guest, have a lender, have an attorney, have an inspector, have somebody else there with you to create that content and, and really be the expert. You then don't have to do all the heavy lifting. The nice thing is, is that then you can download that video and upload it to your YouTube channel. 
Um, if we are not on YouTube together or LinkedIn, connect with me on both. I have a lot of content on, on YouTube and I'm expanding it. Make sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel. This video actually is gonna be on YouTube very soon, probably within 24 hours. Zillow reviews, here's another thing. We've stopped attending our closings because of COVID, post COVID. Maybe you're gonna start attending your closings again. Maybe you've realized that's time you have back to do something else. Don't forget about the reviews. And why do I like Zillow for reviews? Because a lot of the other websites out there connect to Zillow. If you're a, a partner agent at Redfin or some of these other programs, you will notice that they're asking you for the link to your Zillow reviews to look at you. If you Google yourself, your Zillow reviews are gonna be one of the first things that pop up. So make sure that you get more Zillow reviews. That is something that you need to work on immediately. Make sure that everything's showing up correctly because Zillow, whether we like them or not individually, they are the lion's share. I don't even mean the winner, number one. They are the lion's share. The majority of traffic online for real estate is going consumer-wise to Zillow. So you got to play along with them at least for that. Also download the Zillow Premier Agent app. If you are not using that, it's free. So don't think you have to be a Premier Agent to do that. I'm not paying any money to Zillow, myself at least. You know, that's a conversation you can have individually with your coach, whoever you're coaching with. But that free app, that's going to be able to have you control your profile a little bit easier. And more importantly, every time you get a listing, do the 360 degree tour that you do right from your cell phone. You can only do it from your cell phone. And that is going to be very powerful because that shoves your listing up to the top of the Zillow feed just like the same way those Facebook and Instagram algorithms get bypassed when you do the stories. Think about doing the Zillow Premier Agent app and the 360 degree tours. This next one is so huge. Birthdays and housing anniversaries. I feel like in COVID, we got away from doing the birthday cards that I coach on. A lot of the direct mail pieces go back every morning into your LinkedIn, into your Facebook, it doesn't do it on Instagram, but LinkedIn, Facebook, they tell you wh whose birthdays it is. Reach out, give them a phone call, do a pop by, send them something. I use the Starbucks app. Some of you guys in my coaching, uh, remember that video that I did a couple of weeks ago for you. The Starbucks app is great. You can go give them a live card if you feel comfortable post COVID, but start acknowledging birthdays again. I do it every morning. Uh, those of you guys that, that know me know I'm a huge fan of the Miracle Morning. Um, that teaches you to get up early, create some habits. One of the habits that was created for me through that was acknowledging birthdays, doing it every day, tracking it. We're going to talk about tracking in a second. So when you see the birthday, put it in your phone. If you are at our office, you've got uh, the market leader CRM. It's got the mobile app with it. It syncs up to your phone. By the time you get done with 365 days of this, you have got an entire calendar of people to reach out to every day. So for those of you guys that are struggling with who do I talk to and when, absolutely use Realtor theme days. You can see that in the um, first uh, uh, bullet point here. Realtor theme days, it says every day of the week is a different theme. Um, I've got videos on that. We can talk about that and expand on that further on the daily dose. But every morning, spend time just reaching out and acknowledging people. People are starved for attention right now. And post COVID, the other thing that I'm worried about why I'm doing this public coaching tonight is I'm concerned that we're all gonna be so excited to go back to sports, sporting events and, and bonfires and outdoor things and concerts, all the stuff we're starved for that we're gonna get off any sort of good habit we've maybe developed in COVID or that we were planning on going back to post COVID or starting new post COVID because we're so excited to be outside. It's 70 something degrees right now. I'm surprised that this many people are even on this call. Um, we're gonna get distracted this summer. I want you all to focus. And this birthdays and housing anniversaries, it's such an easy thing to do to start out. Pull your MLS records. If you're new, just connect on social media and start talking to the people that are um, out there that may not yet be your client. People love this stuff. They really do. It's been very crucial in my business. Let's talk about greatness trackers and lead trackers. These are um, from Core. 
I have them for you on teamlibrary.com. If you click on free realtor resources, I will also be sending them out in the daily dose. So again, if you're not yet subscribed to the daily dose, it's free for everybody from everywhere. I've got some videos on this on YouTube as well. Just subscribe to my channel and then you can search in there for greatness trackers and lead trackers. What that's going to do is every day, the greatness tracker, I'm going to go back a slide, tracks everybody you talk to that day. So guess what? You've already got a couple people every day you're going to be acknowledging. It's going to start to help fill you up that greatness tracker. The lead, that's your prospecting. Lead tracker then is lead conversion. Because once you get a lead in the door, what I'm finding with our agents that I'm coaching is that when I open up your CRM with you and you can share your screen and do that for me, a lot of people, they're not talking to enough of their, their leads. They're talking to them once. They don't get them on their social media. A lot of the stuff we talked about Saturday as far as cost of sales. If you're spending a bunch of money on leads and then you're not even really following up with them, don't spend any money at all because you're not going to get the results. Be very careful with what you're doing with lead conversion. Is your issue that you're not talking to enough people to generate business or is your issue you're not converting enough people because you're not following up enough? So think about that. Blogging. Blogging, I love blogging. Blogging and blogging both. What I like about this is you all answer the same questions over and over, day in and day out. What if my property doesn't appraise? What happens after a home inspection? Now I'm under contract, what's next? What's the attorney review process like? All of these different things. What's a final walkthrough? All of this could be done in a blog. It could be done in a video or what's called a vlog. Go on my website. So go on my consumer website, which is nicklibert.com, or you can click on the link at the bottom of my coaching blog. You'll see I have lots of blogs. So you guys know I like content. Lots of blogs. Steal some of that content. Make it your own. Do it better than me. I can guarantee you can do it better than me. But think about starting to blog. You have the time now, while we're still somewhat restricted, depending on where you live, um, to start the content. Make a note, a calendar note. Say, I'm going to do this for an hour a day once a week, whenever that is. I'm gonna start releasing the vlogs. For those of you guys that are experienced, you have so much knowledge, so much knowledge. For those of you guys that are new, you have the time. So either way, figure out how to start elevating your brand and it's gonna make you feel like the center of the real estate universe to your clients. Because if you've got all this great information, um, those of you guys that are at Exit Strategy, we have that concierge, the move concierge now, for helping people find contractors and things like that. My clients are coming to me going, this is like really good stuff. What happened? Because I wasn't always consistent. Now I've got the blogs. I've got the move concierge. You've got all these tools at your disposal. Check in with your brand and see what they've got for you because you probably are not using what you already have. And one of the biggest tools you have is the ability to share your knowledge and quite frankly, stop answering the same question over and over, retyping answers you know, you think about what you're saying and asking or responding to answer, answering questions every day. It's the same questions over and over. So think about repurposing some content, saving yourself time, elevating your brand. We're almost done, guys. Then I want to go into Q&A. Facebook business pages. Now, I don't really like Facebook business pages except to boost your posts. Your personal page on Facebook is key. Instagram, I use one page for everything. So my Instagram is both my personal and professional one. You can literally go in settings on Instagram and flip that from a personal page to business. Nobody will notice the difference. On Facebook, it's different. Even though Facebook owns Instagram, they've made it a different way for you. Um, a lot of people go on their business pages and start using that instead of their personal page. Huge mistake. Your clients don't want to go on your business page. But strangers will go on your business page if you're boosting the posts. Exit, we have the Exit Ad Center. It's a five second button to do that. If you're not on there, you can actually just go into your business page, start boosting your open houses, your price reductions, your just sold, all that kind of stuff. Your blog content, it's a great place to do that. Your business pages go beyond your natural database. So your natural database, you're gonna work with on Facebook, your personal page, because that's where the people wanna be, but then go beyond that natural database, your organic database, as you could call it, to strangers boost to strangers. That's what you use your Facebook business page for. Let's talk about HomeSnap and AdWorks for a second. HomeSnap, it's free through our local MLS, MRAD. A lot of you that are not here, um, you still have HomeSnap in some version. 
Um, I use AdWorks. It's uh, there's a button right on the Exit Resource Center for that. Those are also tools. HomeSnap I love as an app for my own clients. They also have some features to boost things to strangers. And AdWorks, what I love about it, it's not a social media tool. It is a digital ad for you to use on all your listings. And also you can push out content to strangers on that. Last note, don't turn down rentals. Um, you may, some of you guys may have seen, I've got a listing that's almost $2 million. That client, when I sold him that home, was a rental lead. He came in as a rental lead. It was a referral from a friend. And they said, do you do rentals? I'm like, yes, yes, I guess I do. And he came in, he was looking for a one bedroom condo to rent because he wasn't sure whether he wanted to move to Chicago. He ended up loving Chicago, wanted to buy. I didn't realize his price point was substantial because this was gonna be now be his full-time home. If I had turned down that rental, I would have never gotten that big sale and now turn around and I've got this big listing. So think about that on the way in. Are you really so busy you can't service a rental? So think about that. Um, those are some basic strategies for you. I really wanted to focus on building these habits and these routines back up and a little bit of a mindset shift. So I am open for questions and I'm also gonna see if we have uh, any questions on here. I don't see any in the chat. Go ahead and unmute yourselves if you want to ask a question. Hi, Nick. This is Savannah. You mentioned the for sale by owner one time agent agreement or um, offering um, open houses and then have them sign a one time commission agreement. Yes. Um, What's your question? Can you tell me how I can find out more information on the one time commission agreement? Absolutely. So in our local MLS, for those of you guys that are not here locally, at least in our local MLS, there is a FISBO for sale by owner one-time compensation agreement. And that would be if you had a buyer. If you go in with them and say, I, I will do an open, you're buyers from that open house. So it's a genius act too. You just wanna make sure that if a buyer actually comes in and likes that property, that you have the ability to get a commission. So you sign that FISBO one-time compensation agreement. And Savannah, since you're at our office, just go in dot loop. You guys all have dot loop premium at our office for free. Go in and there, and it's uh, the one-time compensation agreement is there. And then I can coach you through that. That would be a great thing for you, Savannah, since you're doing um, for sale by owner conversations. All right, any other questions out there? Appreciate you guys being here. It's so nice out, I'm shocked. Well, guys, we have another event coming up. I'm gonna send it to you tomorrow in the Daily Dose. So very quickly, I wanna go over the Daily Dose and a couple other resources for you, um, whether you are at exit um, or not. So first off, go into teamliver.com. This is my realtor resources for everybody. And then you can go in and click on the Daily Dose. It will ask you, um, it will ask you if you're requesting access. You will then get a daily email from me most every day, Monday through Friday with a little resource, something cool. If you're at my office or in my coaching program at Exit, you'll have some more resources on the coaching blog that relate to it, et cetera. But everybody gets something with that. Um, if you ever wanna talk a little bit more with me, you can schedule time with me using this link. Definitely go on my YouTube channel and subscribe. The um, cost of sales video from Saturday was just posted. I've got some other great stuff on the playlist. You will also notice that there is some consumer content. Feel free to use that with your consumers. Um, I've got some podcasts coming up for you as well. And if you are at Exit Strategy, make sure that you are already signed up for the coaching blog that is just for students in my coaching program. But for everybody, the next event is going to be posted here tomorrow as well. But if you're in the Daily Dose, you will see it there. So we're gonna do another Money Mondays evening session for all of you coming up very soon. And I look forward to seeing you all there. Thank you for being here tonight. It's been a half hour. I, that was my goal was to, to uh, limit us to a half hour and let you get back to your evening. This has been recorded and we will have it up for you on the YouTube channel very soon. Bye-bye.